Hi, this is Jennifer and Stephen with Iowa Backyard Farmer and today we wanted to talk tomatoes with you. Um, we do a lot of tomatoes. How many are we growing this year? Oh, it's like 70 different varieties. Every year we grow about 70 different varieties and um, it's always different ones. So we'll have like 50 that are, that are the same and another 20 that we'll rotate through as we're trialing different things. And so, and I think this is an interesting thing about tomatoes. I once went to a seed store with three other people and we all came out with different things and going through the process of why did you pick this? Why did you pick that? And we discovered <laughs> that we all had different criteria. So I happen to like bright colors and stripes. And so I picked really beautiful things. I am very much swayed by a pretty package, <laughs> <laughs> but um, you pick for different things traits right we might pick for does it crack does it do well in the heat does it you know have some disease resistance so tell me about your process for when we decide what makes the cut and what doesn't because we look at a lot of things well there's thousands of varieties around and so to be able to get it down to just 70 it seems to take all winter long yes, yes. <laughs> and, and we're, we're looking for things that that will work here in central Iowa. Um, I know that things that I grew as a kid in Washington state don't necessarily work as well here. Uh, the environment is different. There's a lot more moisture in the air than the desert side of Washington that I grew up in. Um, hotter summers. <laughs> and, and, and the summers are just different. The temperatures are different. The disease pressure is different. So we, we really spend a lot of time trying to find products um, varieties that are gonna work really well here in central Iowa. Yeah, so if you're from somewhere else and you're watching this, and your favorite tomato is not on this list, do not despair. It's probably fantastic where you are, but these are specific to our, our spot. Yeah, and, and, and some of it is just environmentally related. So if we go down south, if we were trying to grow tomatoes in Florida, for example, they need to be able to handle heat, high, high heat, and be able to flower and pollinate in that high heat and also the diseases. The disease pressure down there is just insane compared to what we experience here. That said, we still do have a number of diseases because it is fairly humid. And so we, we really try to come up with um, different varieties that work really well for us and taste good. I, I, yeah, and, and, and are pretty, right? <laughs> and it's and all pretty. <laughs> and, and for when we do canning, it's got to be able to can well and we, you know, enjoy the flavor. Yeah, yeah. so and end use is a is an important characteristic. One of the things I'm always looking for is how easy is it to use when I'm processing 40 to 100 pounds of them. Little rubbles and ridges are, are fun, but I make making sauce harder. <laughs> yeah. Harder. <laughs> Um, the other thing that we're always looking for is like um, the flavor. The flavor is really important. Yep, absolutely. And, and depending on the type, and so I'm maybe a little less concerned on some of the flavors with the paste tomatoes because for the most part we, we spice those up. Um, yeah, they're going into sauces and things. But for other ones that are we're going to eat fresh, like cherry tomatoes or grape grape sized tomatoes, or some of the slicers, yeah, it's gotta have a good flavor. And and there is a wide variety. Let's start with the cherry tomatoes today and our cocktail tomatoes, all the little bite-sized ones. And we'll go through, you've got that pulled up on the computer. Let's go through it. And I think, is white currant our first yeah, white one? White currant is the first one here. It is the smallest one. It's considered a, basically a currant size uh, tomato. Uh, reason we brought that one in is number one, somebody asked for it. Uh, number two, it's considered the sweetest of the little uh, tomatoes. We really enjoy it. I thought they're... They call it garden candy. <laughs> yeah, garden candy. My, my only hang up with these is is they, uh, um, they'll they self-seed. So uh, if you're going to harvest them, I would harvest the entire cluster. Otherwise, you're going to have half of them, you know, accidentally and fall to the ground. Seeds, it's hard to catch them all. So they're hard to catch, but they are pretty good. So those are fun. Black cherry is one of your favorites. I don't have a picture of that one here, but... Yeah, well, we'll post one up here. So black cherry is one we brought in a couple of years ago, and it's just sweet. As far as a, just a really delicious, I eat them off the, the vine, a lot of them off the vine. <laughs> but black, black cherry is one of my favorites. It is an heirloom. Um, just really, really like the flavor though. Yeah, that one, that one's really, and it's really pretty if you're doing a box. Again, like if you wanted to put some different colors, it's got kind of that darker purpley color. It's pretty. Yeah. All right, Chadwick Cherry. So Chadwick Cherry is just one of the, the heirloom red ones, has a delicious, uh, uh, kind of a, just a regular tomato-y flavor. Uh, really like it, super productive. My, 
my uh, biggest watch out for this one is it likes to grow tall. It does. And that, that's the other thing I look at. I'm the one in the greenhouse. Sometimes if it doesn't make it through production process, um, I kick <laughs> it out because they, they're either too vigorous. This one's on the very end. Too it, it, it's fairly vigorous. And <laughs> it so likes to grow tall. <laughs> we, we do have vertical trellises which extend up. They're about seven and a half feet, and these will grow about three feet above that um, during our regular season. Uh, they're loaded the entire time, have pretty good disease resistance, have really yeah, good flavor. Have trouble with them. Um, but if you're thinking, oh, I want something to put in a little pot, yeah, that's not, not the one. one. Yeah. <laughs> All right, chocolate cherry. How is chocolate cherry different from black cherry? Because they look kind of very similar. Um, that one is, is it is it has a similar look, but it, it is more of a tomatoey flavor. It, it's not near it's the, not as sweet. Not as, as sweet. Yeah. And people that love that one love that one, and they won't won't uh, want to switch to anything else. But uh, so we would get requests for so that. So that's one. that one is a specific request one that we've brought in. Okay, husky cherry, husky uh, cherry. That's one of our short ones. Yeah. So the husky series is are what are considered uh, dwarf indeterminates, and so um, as we think of determinate versus indeterminate, a determinate one is one that sets basically gets a fairly set height, sets a fairly set number of flowers and the harvest is window is relatively short so you get a lot but so you get, you get a once. lot all at once which is wonderful for some applications if like you're gonna can, can <laughs> and you want a whole lot in a short time period you would you'd prefer a determinant variety uh, this one is a dwarf indeterminate so it won't get super tall like the uh, the so Chadwick the, cherry the inner nodes are gonna be like the Chadwick cherry where like branch space branch space like this the dwarf indeterminates are gonna have shorter inner nodes so they don't get as tall but they keep growing all season long yeah and so with the indeterminates they keep producing flowers until basically something kills them frost, frost disease, disease insects something. whatever at the end of the season or if you're in a big greenhouse it may be a couple of years before um you know the plant ends up dying uh, but so, these these are nice because it's a sh much shorter plant so you could do it in a pot so you could do it in a pot a, a big pot um but uh, yeah, really like that. That's one of the reasons we brought this one in is just uh, its ability to produce all season long on a on a much smaller plant that could potentially be grown in a pot. And they taste pretty good. Yeah, I, I thought they were they're really very good. Nice cherry. I, they're I, nice red cherry. I, I really liked them when we tried them last year. Okay, midnight snack. So midnight snack is another indeterminate. It is um, kind of a bicolor. It's an indigo one where. The, the shoulders are really blue. Kind of really Wherever dark. it's in the sun, you'll get the, the dark blue, yeah. uh, almost blackish color on it. Um, the, the indigo ones historically have a reputation for not tasting very good. Uh, this is the first one where it seems like they've overcome that uh, that not so good flavor, and they're so pretty, they're so they're so really pretty, pretty. <laughs> and and fairly pretty good tasting, um, considering where you know how far they've come. Breeders have, have yeah, come with this, this type a, of tomato. This was a 2017 AAS winner, so this has this has some awards and has all those antioxidants for the extra anthocyanins, um, and they're just pretty. I like them. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, red patio choice. Red patio choice, another cherry tomato. That's it's it's one of our first determinants that we brought in. Much smaller plant, um, and even with it being a determinant, it still produced fairly good throughout it's, the yeah, season. It's been pretty productive. It, it did kind of peak and then tailed off, but uh, really like the flavor of that one. If you want something in the container, that's uh, they were kind of early for me too. So we got those, like you know, because. Right now in March, there are no fresh tomatoes and yeah. we're all sad. <laughs> but when we get them out in the garden, I'm like looking at my cherries. Where are you coming? And those were pretty uh, th Those are one of the first yeah. ones that we got, yeah. So. And Sparky. Sparky, Sparky XSL. This is, this one we did not expect to be awesome, but it was totally awesome. You want to tell them why? Yeah, so this one we know a little bit about the, the, the breeder who uh, developed this one. And he's working really hard to develop products that are, both disease resistant and have flavor and and throughout the season the first year we grew it I thought well they're pretty good you know not not amazing but pretty good and then we got to the end of the season I thought I turned off the water everything's gonna die uh, school was starting back again and, and my busy season at work came along and about three weeks after turning off the water went to clear out all the vines which I assumed would be dead and then there's this plant Still as green as can be, happy as can be, producing all of these beautiful and they're, little. And they're stripy. They're pretty. And they're, they're, they're pretty. They're pretty. They're, and, they're a red and, stripy tomato. And 
And it took it to me in my mind, it took it from, well, it's, you know, is it just an average to it's actually a pretty amazing plant. Uh, the flavor was good. Um, produced super well in terms of and handling last handling standing. stresses <laughs> like our garden with no yeah. water and 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 in that that portion of our garden is covered it's part of our greenhouse system so it's covered so it's not like it was getting rainwater it was handling essentially a drought um oh, and okay. still produce some really yeah. good ones i liked that one you do that one okay this one's a standard we did this one because everybody expects this one super sweet 100 hybrid it's productive it's classic. If you think cherry tomato, this is the one you're probably thinking of. Yeah. There's lots of other varieties and stuff, but that one is a good solid performer. It works every time. Yeah. Really good one. Works every time. What else have we got? So kind of going down the list, Sunrise Bumblebee is one of our, um, oh, what do they call it? The, the artisan type. It's, it's like kind the sparky. Of, it's kind yeah. of an orangey ones with stripes on it. Um, really, really sweet. It's one it's of our really garden candy pretty. ones. I will just eat a bowl of those. That they're they're fantastic they're swirly on the inside they've got kind of a little tang to them but they're really sweet yeah so really delicious next one up is sun sugar sun sugar is like the sweetest cherry tomato you'll get it's a, a although we have one that's new that's you got one that's in. new that that we'll we'll test this we'll year give a run for it but uh sun sugar is, is just i mean it's, it's the garden candy um it's orange uh, uh, golden orange and they're really early and they're super delicious it's a half two for a lot of people for us yeah and some people have heard of sun gold it is basically a sibling of of sun sugar uh, the difference between the two is Sun Gold, I've heard, is a tiny bit sweeter, but it splits on the vine yeah, it's hard to really keep bad. Okay. So it's really hard to keep, you know, get a good harvest off of it. Uh, sun Sugar, maybe not quite as sweet, although it's hard to beat it for sweetness, but it, it doesn't split near as much. And so um, if, if you're a Sun Gold fan and are tired of it splitting, try Sun Sugar. Yeah. Yellow patio choice is related to the red patio choice. It's just yellow. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a, another very small determinant patio um, tomato. It's not as sweet. It's not as sweet as the Sunrise Bumblebee or the Sun Sugar. It is super productive. It, it was an AAS winner. Mm -hmm. um, they have a beautiful yellow color. They're nice and early like the other ones, and they're really good in containers. Yep. Really good in containers. Really good. Okay. Dang. Next one up, Brad's Atomic Grape. So Brad's has got quite a history behind it. Um, it it's, it's one of those varieties that has a unique flavor that either you love or you don't. Yeah, so <laughs> the people who love this are like, this is my favorite tomato ever. The people, uh, if it's not your favorite, you're probably like, I'll never grow it again. But if you love it, it's perfect. <laughs> Yeah, so definitely a, it's, pretty. It, it's pretty, has a unique flavor, does have some of that anthocyanin background in it. And so that, that does make it really pretty. It just gives it a unique flavor. Um, the downside of that, from my perspective, is there's no backup for it. And so uh, one year we, we did lose a lot of those in, in production and I had nothing else to send people yeah, to. Yeah, there's nothing like it. <laughs> and it's, so it's pretty cool. It's, a, it's, it's one that we are growing more of this year to make sure that we don't... Uh, run out basically yes yes <laughs> that was sad uh, fantastico is kind of a new one why did we add fantastico that's another um aas winner so, i think for containers right? yeah so fantastico is a kind of a, a great size one it is a really early maturing one that um is really sweet and it is a determinant so it can be grown in a container so and, and that's that's a key thing that, that, that I really wanted for this. A lot of the cherry tomatoes that are determinants have that kind of the more acidic um, tomatoey flavor. This one is one that you can grow in a container, and, and it's and it's sweet. really really sweet. Well, we like this one. And last this year. is this is a misnomer. People think I'm going to buy this little tomato, like this cherry tomato, and so it's going to have a correspondingly small plant. This is a lie. <laughs> Most <laughs> of the cherry tomatoes that are indeterminate are very vigorous growers. They're very big. And so it's really nice to have something like you said, so small and so sweet, um, in a in a in a pot worthy yeah. size, <laughs> pot worthy size. Mountain Vineyard. I don't have a picture of this one, but this was one of my favorite. It is a pretty, not just the tomato. It's a pretty plant. Yeah, it's a, got a nice leaf structure to it. Yeah, and 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 so Mountain Vineyard. We brought that in. It is a compact indeterminate. So another one that produces well the entire season. But it's small enough you can put it in, in a container. Yeah, so you get those little short inner nodes. So little short inner nodes. Um, 
one reason I brought that in is it has really high lycopene content. So yeah. for those who are really health conscious that are trying to get a high lycopene uh, tomato, that's one of the ones that we brought in for that. Well, and I think the grape tomatoes, that's a small grape, it tend to be a little sweeter too, generally. Maybe. So. I think that one. Okay, I yep. like that one. Mm -hmm. Speaking of grape tomatoes, our favorite grape tomato. So Napa grape is one that we've carried for as long as we've sold tomato plants. It's it's a super duper sweet one. It is an indeterminate. Um, just really good sweet flavor. Does get not it as does get tall. It does get tall. <laughs> uh, not as tall as Chadwick cherry, but it is a, a bigger plant. Yeah, but it's it's if you've got the space for it, that's worth your time because it's super sweet. Yep. Uh, Red torch is one of our other artisan tomatoes. We like those. It's like <laughs> well, the idea that you were breeding them to have some disease resistance, some kind of fun colors, and also to have this artisan heirloomy flavor. I, I like that combination. That's something that I really like. And so Red Torch is one of this group, right? It's, 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 yeah, the same breeder has is, is, uh, developed the Sparky XSL variety. And uh, yeah, just another good one. Uh, we, 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 we brought it in to replace some others that split every time it rained, and this one doesn't split, so. Um, yeah, so like, Which is sometimes hard to get in those longer, little, small tomatoes. Yeah, so this is 2019 AAS winner, so it's got some prizes for sugar and flavor and all the good stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yep, so let's let's switch gears and actually move to a little bit bigger. Let's look at our cocktail-sized tomatoes. I don't know if we've got any uh, packet that we can pull no, up that has pictures these. of those. I'll put some on the screen. So, um, cocktail size, basically, I think of golf ball size so the golf ball size ish it might be two <laughs> tomatoes bites. might be two it bites. might be two bites so it depends on how you want to use it um if you're going to use it on a salad you might want to slice it um to do that um we've got one in here that we really like to dry they're just little little unique and uh, certainly enjoy them the first one up is apricot zebra and again for the stripes for me are you noticing it? yeah <laughs> <laughs> golf ball orange size orange with, with stripes, but it is so meaty. A lot of your cherry tomatoes will tend to be a little seedy. Mm -hmm. And then you have, you know, you have to, and we, it's one of the things we check when we're doing, is it gonna be all seedy or skin, or is there gonna be some really good meat to that? Apricot zebra has, it's like a full good tomato in a little bitty package. <laughs> yeah, and this one we've, we've we discovered that we like to dry it. Yeah, uh, dry it, it was really, really good. good dried tomatoes. Yeah. So next one up is black strawberry. I do have a picture of that you one. You got a picture of that this one? This was my new favorite. This one has kind of plummy undertones. It's really sweet. So Stephen really likes the chocolate cherry. It's got that same really sweet. This has got almost a fruity sweet flavor to it. I could eat this one all day. Yeah. Uh, next one up is Health Kick. And that's one that we brought in this last year. It's kind of a saladette, kind of like a Roma type tomato. Uh, the reason we brought that one in is somebody had requested us to bring in more um, tomatoes with higher lycopene content. This fit that description. Uh, we planted it among, it, it is a, a determinant, and we planted and a, it uh, by our, our uh, paste tomatoes, and it was, it was, it was very, very impressive. Which is that. nice. The thing we watch out for with kind of the plum and paste tomatoes is that sometimes they tend to be a little dry, um, which is okay. If you're making sauce, you want that, but this one is... And for a salad tomato, it has a, a little juicier mm -hmm. texture to it. It's not it's not dry like some of those paste tomatoes can be. Yeah. Next up, Honey Delight. Oh, my favorite. Again, <laughs> they're all my favorite. This one's bright egg yolk yellow, um, just probably an inch and a half across. And um, it's prolific. It's beautiful. I put it in a combination with everything. It's sweet. It, it goes really well with our next one, which is Mountain Magic. It's about the same size. Mountain Magic is the red version of that. If you've seen like the Campari tomatoes in Sam's Club or wherever, where they have the little tomatoes on the vine, it's about that size, about that flavor. They're really good. Mm -hmm. Oh, and another favorite. Huh. Tropical Sunset was one we <laughs> added. Was this last year? Yeah, we added that one last year. Wanted to try that one out. I thought maybe it would be similar to uh, Sunrise Bumblebee, but it, it is bigger and really good flavor. It's really, it's a really good flavor. I was way impressed. Um, and so we're growing it still because yep. it has a really high brick score. <laughs> it's very sweet <laughs> for a, a, a nice little cocktail tomato. Yeah. Uh, another one that in, in this cocktail category is Too Tasty. 
and that's a new one so we're, yeah, we're, we're bringing that one in to taste it, it or because it's it comes highly recommended um, but it is kind of a, the bicolor one where it has um, you know the, the red with kind of the purplish uh, shoulders on that and yeah, we'll put a picture. We'll put a picture up of it, but uh, you know, high, it comes very highly recommended. So looking so forward this to one, that one. This one, it said it even might have beaten the legendary Sun Gold for sweetness. So we're gonna test that because. So that's we, that's, we have a that's lot what of taste really, testers have said. I've, we have a lot I've of got really a, I've got a, <laughs> I've got to test that one. We'll yeah, see. we'll see how that one does. <laughs> okay. Then we go to our more Roma type. Yeah, generally the paste tomatoes. We've got a bunch of different types of paste tomatoes. Sauce, salsa for canning. Um, they're a little bit firmer. They're not quite as, they're not juicy and watery, I would say. Mm -hmm. So so that we got, for these, I almost want to break them into two different categories. We've got our determinants, which will stay small, don't need a trellis, maybe a cage of some sort, but uh, you can get two or three decent harvests do a lot of canning, get them all done. And then you've got your indeterminates, which are big plants that will produce throughout the season. So maybe yeah. a couple different ways and we you, can go and through you those. Go, and you've got the heirlooms and you've got the hybrids and they each have their, their really good spots. So let's start with an heirloom first. So probably one of our mo most common ones is Amish based. It is a, an indeterminate, grows throughout the season, gives really nice Thick, meaty, good flavor uh, tomatoes, eight to what, twelve ounces or so. Mm -hmm. So that's 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 and one that's, of the most popular. That's a good all around one. It gets the the what is it? The Slow Food Arc of Taste Award because <laughs> it's again, it's not it's not a dry tomato. You can use it in a lot of a lot of. It's a multi purpose tomato. Yeah. But it is nice and meaty. Yep. Okay. So let's talk about um, maybe a. How do you want to do this? You want to go through the indeterminates first? Well, so you don't get lost. Okay, no, so no, so let's <laughs> yeah, so let's come back and do the next indeterminate. So the taller one that produces throughout the season, Gladiator is one we've grown for several and years. That gives so because I do a lot of canning and peeling little bitty tomatoes is hard. Gladiator is a nice big paste tomato. It's one of our bigger. Well, maybe medium size. It's a nice. Yeah, it's it's bigger for a paste tomato. For a paste tomato, it's not like a huge tomato, but it's a nice. Yeah. Handful. Yep. Uh, probably the indeterminate that we we've enjoyed the most the last couple of years is called Granadero. Oh, I love that one. And it it's a good flavor, good size, um, really healthy plant, and so. And it's very uniform, and I can go out and pick just a whole bowl of Granaderos, which. Is, is lovely. It makes it really, really, <laughs> it makes it really, really, really quick to can, yeah. Yeah, they're really good. And so as we go through, pull up the other um, indeterminate, San Mar Marzano is the other big one that is very popular. Yeah, so this is the one they always want to say in your Italian canned <laughs> tomatoes. It's made with San Marzano. You can grow your own. And they're pretty good. And if you don't like San Marzano, you can get, we have Paisano, which is the shorter version of that. Yeah, so Paisano is the determinant version, version of, of that. that. So but they're kind of a longer, skinnier tomato. Yeah, so let's go back and look at the determinant ones. And so a lot of these are fairly similar. Um, I do like to grow kind of a portfolio approach of tomatoes so that we don't grow all, all of just one, but try different things. Um, so on the determinant side, early resilience is a fairly new one that we've brought in. Super productive. It's uh, an AAS winner pretty recently. Really, really good flavor. It's um, a nice uniform size. It's a nice tidy plant. It's when, a good. Yeah, when we want to make a lot of pasta or pasta sauce, um, that that's that's a good one. Uh, next one up is one that we've brought in this year called La Roma Three. Yeah, why did we add this one? This was a new one to us. So I've heard several people comment that uh, the La Roma 3, it's not the same as Roma, we'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, La Roma 3 is amongst the biggest of the determinate ones. Um, so we wanted to try that. Um, it did come with, with, with really good reviews. So uh, La Roma 3, just a little bit bigger than the others on yeah, here. So that's, so. that's always the thing, because if the classic Roma, which we grow, is like is, we could almost put it in our cocktail tomatoes, yeah, right? Yeah, it's they're about, very about small. two ounces. They're very small, <laughs> and and they're they're good. They're fine. I mean, we have people who get them every year, but if you're working with them in mass, it's nice to have just a little bit bigger size. So early resilience, plum regal, I think, is another one that we have on that list. They're very yeah. similar. 
Um, yeah, Paisano's, Paisano's there as well, Plum Regal. Um, a lot of those are just very similar to each other. Um, about the same size, four-ish ounces or so, compared to the original Roma, which is two ounces, and a lot of people still love that one. But gosh, if you're peeling two ounce tomatoes versus four ounce, it takes you half as long. It takes you half as long. <laughs> so <laughs> um, we still we still grow the ro regular Roma, um, but for just for us, we'll uh, we'll skip that one and go with one of the other ones. Yeah, um, one that I liked last year that we tried a lot was a surprise to me. It's an orange Roma type paste tomato called Sunrise Sauce. Tell us about Sunrise Sauce. Uh, that, that was probably the biggest surprise last year. As we thought, well, hey, the seeds look interesting. We'll take the description. It looks like any of the other uh, determinate romas, except it is orange. And with that came a sweet flavor that you don't find normally in a, in a roma type of um, tomato. So, and that was super productive. Yeah, I think we, we had two, of those two plants, <laughs> and and we only and it's a relatively short window for harvesting. I think we only got maybe three harvests off, so like a two-ish week window but uh each time each plant we got a great big bowl uh, of tomatoes so and it made beautiful sauce <laughs> if, if, was, if you're cool. okay looking at tomato sauce that's not just red <laughs> this is a really um, good one i we really like that one a lot really fun. and then one that's become really popular um that we've left in this category is is super sauce and the super sauce produces these thick meaty like one pound tomatoes and when we first tried this a couple years ago, it was described as an indeterminate. So we tried to grow it as an indeterminate. And we, up a trellis. Up a trellis. And it was a miserable failure. And I thought, why in the world would we grow this again? But it, people kept asking for it. So we finally started to grow it as a determinant. And holy smokes, those things just pack on the one pound tomatoes yeah. and... And good flavor too. It yeah. just uh, we had to grow them the right so, way. Yeah, we have to grow it the right <laughs> way. This one's not one for a trellis. It really doesn't keep going, but it does keep going, sort of. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah, it's really good. So that one, that one, Get a nice super big meaty. Cage. <laughs> yeah, it does take a, a big cage to to hold all those those tomatoes. And then another new one we're adding this year is Supremo. Why that? What attracted you to Supremo? So, Why does so, that make the cut? Yeah, so Supremo is another one of the determinate ones that kind of fits in with the rest of those. The the thing in the description that attracted me to it is is it mentions that it could um, set fruit really well even in the peak summer heat. And so some years when it is super hot and super dry, um, the flowers don't pollinate unless you go through and flick them or do something to try to, to help them along. Um, yeah, you'll, you'll get fruit set, fruit set, and then it was like that really hot week and there's blanks, there's, and then you'll get more fruit set. And this one was theoretically gonna keep yeah, going claim, through that claim, hot time. Yeah, claims that it can go through that hot time. So I wanted to try that out. This last year was crazy for us. And so we were gone for what, five weeks in August, <laughs> July through the, the beginning of August. And so um, we had irrigation that kept things Alive. wet <laughs> but when we came back some of our, our biggest tomatoes that were used to being really productive um left blanks um and, and it was because we were gone and it was really really hot and and, and uh, it was just too hot for some of those to fr set fruit so i thought well let's let's try this one see if it really does set fruit in the, uh -huh. the peak heat. and the, the next two that we're going to talk about are also known for that too so one is arkansas traveler that's an heirloom and it is it is known for its ability to set well in the heat, and it's a lovely tomato. We'd grow a bunch of those every year. Um, it works great. And the second one is a newer one to us, and that one we just added recently is called Estiva. Um, what do you know about Estiva? So Estiva, so both of these we're, we're kind of transitioning into that medium size slicer type of tomato away from the yeah these the, are the, 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 the paste ones. Um, so the the feedback that we got on Estiva was that kind of the same thing as the supremo is it could set fruit in any kind of heat and so um wanted to try that out uh, arkansas traveler is an heirloom that has kind of the same reputation and, and we've noticed that even in ours when we came back from being gone for a month this last summer uh, for all the different varieties that had nothing on them there's arkansas, arkansas traveler. <laughs> saw travelers had a whole bunch that were ready to, to harvest so it uh so it, it's it's got a good reputation that is, is well suited for it. Wanted to try this Estiva because number one, they said it was the most 
for, for the, the breeder group that we got this from, they said it's the most flavorful tomato that they'd ever grown. Um, we'll see. And But it could set fruit in any of the extreme heat. So that's why we wanted to bring yeah, we'll, that one we'll in. Give that one a try. Um, let's go back to some of our smaller ones. One of the problems we have is when we're selling plants in the spring is this, that everybody has a different situation. And so a lot of people want a bigger tomato, but kind of still on a, on a smaller bush. So talk to me about some of our shorter mid-sized tomatoes. So we've got several different ones that we've brought in to try to, to meet that need. Um, better bush is, is one of them. It's, it's just a nice meaty tomato on a really small compact plant. And if you have a, not a huge container and really want a, a larger or, you know, slicer you type of tomato, tomato yeah. um, better bush is a really good one for that. Um, thinking of some of the others that are a little bit smaller in stature, uh, one of our favorite ones from the last couple of years is BHN 589. <clears throat> Don't ask me why they named it that. We've got a whole BHN series but um don't let the numbers scare you yeah, away um it's really good. It, it's, it's 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 one that is super productive handles the heat stress fairly well it's well and it doesn't get smaller so a lot of the tomatoes kind of they'll wear out through the summer so you get nice big ones and they kind of get smaller and yeah they kinda get you, you get to get to the end of the season you know they start out as seven or eight ounce at the beginning of the season and they're down to like three ounces at the end of the season. This one, this one holds the 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 quality of the fruit much better yeah. than some of the others. So like even Celebrity, which is the classic, and we grow that one, and mm -hmm. we've got that one, but compared, we grew them right next to each other. That BHN 589 outproduced it in uniformity, in pro in production, all the things. Yeah. Yeah. And it tastes good. Yeah, and Celebrity and BHN 589 have a very similar plant structure. Um, they're, they're ones where if you're a huge celebrity fan, I would grow two, one, one of each and, and plant them next to each other, see what you think. Yeah. So, um, I guess moving on, Goliath Early is one we brought in this year. It is the earliest maturing of the larger tomatoes. And... Oh, so this is a contest, right? To get, <laughs> to get a big tomato. I mean, we can get cherry tomatoes before the 4th of July, but can you get a real nice big tomato before the 4th of July. If you plant it early, give it a little care, right? Yeah, yeah you do. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta get the right variety. <laughs> you gotta get the right variety. And, and this is a variety that does mature. A little the, bit The first faster. ones are, yeah. are, are pretty early, and so, so it's a good one to choose This one for goes with, you've got Goliath early, we've also got New Girl, and those two kind of fill that spot of, we're off to the races, let's get us a ripe tomato. Yeah, absolutely. Next one in that, that slicer category that we've got is Husky Red. And this, this is another one from that Husky series where it's it's, it's, it's a dwarf <laughs> indeterminate, uh, which is really nice. And uh, so you can you can have, put it in a container and get a harvest all season long. Yeah, but a little more manageable growth. M much more manageable to um, for size, yeah. And then uh, rounding out our medium size one is Tappy's Heritage, and that's an heirloom one. And from the growing perspective, that's a it's a nice um, it's a nice plant. When I grow them in the greenhouse, it's a nice, sturdy, very healthy looking plant. What else do you yeah. want to tell us about it? Um, just good old fashioned flavor. It's been disease resistant. There's not a lot of stuff from 50 or 100 years ago that is worth still growing today because there are so many improvements in plant breeding. But um, there's a few. But, but there's a few <laughs> that are, are have been worth keeping alive. And this is one of them. Yeah, I really like this one. Yeah. So I'm moving to the little bit bigger ones. Um, one of our classic ones that we've sold and, and have enjoyed for many years is just uh, big beef. I think that's kind of like the industry standard for new tomatoes, right? Is it as good as big beef? <laughs> yeah, is it as good as big beef or is it's, it not? It's, it, does, it does all the things. It's a nice, vigorous grower. It's very uniform. When I'm pruning them, I'm like, they, they're easy to prune. They're easy to work with. The fruit is all very uniform size. It doesn't crack. It ripens really nice. I mean, it's got a really nice, it's a good, nice size. It's not quite a pound. Um, yeah, and, and good, it, good red tomato good flavor. Yeah, it's tomato. just a good all around tomato. If, if you want just a good all around tomato, that's one that we frequently recommend. If you want something that is unique and not like or just a good red tomato, then I'd, I'd try some of the other, some of, so the, some of the other more fun ones, but it, that has been the classic. We, we, we sell a lot of those. Yeah, you wouldn't be sad with that one. 
Yeah. So and for this one, I think Big Boy is in that category too. It's been a best-selling tomato. If you go to any of the big box stores and you're going to find Big B, if you're going to find Big Boy, they're kind of just the standard nice big red tomatoes. Yeah. And another one in that category is Big Daddy. Uh, all, all kind all the of big ones. <laughs> all, all connected there. Um, similar maturing, similar size. Um, it's it, actually a, a descendant of Big Boy. So it's a little newer genetics. Plant so. pedigree, so it is newer, has a little bit better disease resistance. Uh, but yeah, this one was, was specifically requested. So um, I liked that one last year as well. And it's it's just a little nice big red round tomato, all of those. Bush Goliath, though, we brought in because, again, people looking for a smaller tomato in, in a, or a big tomato in a smaller space. Um, how big is that one good? So that one's about 10 ounces uh, on average. Um, nice size plant. So yeah, if you want a container plant with that about a 10 ounce tomato, that's a really good one. Yeah. And those bush ones are, they're nice sturdy plants too. Yep. Um, Caspian pink is one of the heirlooms that I adore. Anything that's a pink, I think has a sweeter flavor. Um, they, they're probably my favorites, the pinks. Um, and Caspian Pink is no exception. Um, it's really yeah. fabulous flavor. Yeah, so Brandywine is kind of the, the, hair, or the heirloom classic for flavor. And some people say that this one will beat Brandywine it, it for flavor. It beats it for me, yeah. So. so, And it's easier to grow. Brandywine tends to be a little problematic with disease resistance. Yeah, well, it, there's... <laughs> Any heirloom is going to have more disease issues than, than a, a newer one, but um, anyway. When, when we're picking, we're trying to pick mm. ones that are going to grow you more than two tomatoes on a plant, <laughs> and then it's going to live through the whole season, because yeah. some of them are real, a lot trickier to grow. Yeah. <laughs> They're not as productive. Yep. This so, one's good. So the last one here that's a, a determinate size for this, uh, you know, generally larger red tomatoes is Galahad. Um, Get another determinant can be grown in a larger container. Um, one of the reasons we we brought this one on and like it and have kept it, um, it, I mean it's good flavor, but it has some tolerance to septoria, which is a really common leaf disease here That's in Iowa, here, yeah. and it seems to handle the septoria fairly well. Um, and and it handled the heat better than some of the others. So some others seem to do better on wet and cold springs. This one does better in a little bit warmer um, weather than some others that we've tried. Yep. So um, kind of moving on to a couple of other heirlooms um, that have been really popular and we've sold for a lot these, of years. These have a fan club. <laughs> yeah, there's a fan club. Hungarian Heart is, is a key one there. It uh, has got a flavor that we've never been able to match. We've tried so many different varieties trying to get an, a, 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 a like meaty ox heart with that same flavor. And we've never been able to, to beat that. So certainly a fan club. My only watch out on that one is for whatever reason, it has really wispy leaves. And, and it's really big fruit. So it, yeah, it kind of looks like it's It, it looks funny. <laughs> yeah. And so some people say, oh, I think this, this plant's mm -hmm. sick. No, it's not sick. It just naturally has kind of a wispy drapey just a, a drapey <laughs> plant structure drives me crazy in the greenhouse every year i'm like oh i don't like these but then we get them into the kitchen and i'm like oh well okay they're worth it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and italian heirlooms like that the hungarian heart i think is more of like a almost like a pinky flavor mm -hmm. italian heirloom is just that it's got more of that robust tomato flavor yep um but they're very similar yeah. They're very similar. Yep. And the last one here we, is one that we're trying out for this this year for the first time. The Madame... Madame Marmond. It's a it's a French tomato. I feel fancy. It's If, if we're going to win beauty pageants, here we go. It's got the <laughs> nice little roughly lobes, but not too much so that it doesn't look like a raisin, you know. And this is just <laughs> so, and, you know, it, it'll be pretty. Be nice and juicy and pretty. Yep. So trying that one for the first time. Now, if we're going to move to the bigger red ones. I know, you're like, there's still more. Yeah, there's still more. We're almost done with the red ones. <laughs> Big, biggest red ones, color is that are not red, and then we'll, then we'll let you go yep. if you're still here. <laughs> yep. So for the really big ones, um, we got several that are kind of the classic ones we can just go through. Beef Masters, one that has been around for a while, has, has a fan club, really good flavor, productive, um, Good Again, it's got resistance. kind of that little bit of lobiness on it that makes it it's a really pretty tomato. Yeah. And it's a really good flavor. It doesn't crack like a lot of your, a lot of those heirloomy ones with the nice ruffles and stuff. 
they crack like crazy and they look terrible. This one actually <laughs> keeps the pretty all the way Keeps through. it looking good. Better Boy is another one, part of that, 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 that boy series. <laughs> um, good disease resistance, again, about a pound, a little over a pound or so. Um, Brandy Boy is one that we, we've always liked. Then we stopped selling it for a couple of years and then we brought it back. I love that one. It's again, it's a it's a brandy wine cross big boy type thing. So you get and it's a pink. It's like it's like it's got the a little bit of a lobe. It's got the pink, but they're big. They're huge. They're juicy. If you like that heirloom yeah. flavor, but not the fiddliness. Yeah, it's a good one. <laughs> it's a good Try one. Try that one. And, and don't be scared away from pink. Some people are like, oh, I can never eat a pink tomato. Just assume it's red. It, it looks. It's light red. It's light red. <laughs> <laughs> they're sweeter. Yeah. So um, classic of all classics here, we've got Brandywine, which is, has been around for, I don't know, 150 years or so. And it's just like the standard for, for classic tomato flavor. And people that love these will always grow these. And sometimes we try to get them to try some of these others that are, you know, a descendant of Brandywine. Um, we're not always successful. We're not always successful. <laughs> but um, if, you're, if you're new to gardening and you're like, I've heard heirlooms are the best. <laughs> This one will frustrate you. It, is, it does not have as good disease resistance. It is not. It is not as productive, and it is not as easy to care for. But when you get fruit off of it, it's amazing. Mm, but super, it's super not good, a beginner yeah. tomato. <laughs> <laughs> nope. So the another one that's that is a big red one is delicious, and that's a one to two pounder. Has historically had the world record for the largest tomato, single tomato on a on a plant. Um, really good. I. I it, they're humongous. They're, they're humongous. If you want to grow something humongous, you know, grow this you'll one. probably get four or six tomatoes off of a plant, but they're big yeah. and they're they're really good tasting they, as well. They're, they're fun. Uh, another heirloom one that has been around a long time is Mortgage Lefter, and um, another one that just has a, a a following. There's a nice story behind it. Um, Some guy pays off his mortgage selling tomatoes, right? <laughs> yeah, and uh, so just a good classic, mild flavor. Yeah, mild sweet it's flavor. A nice one. Um, Mountain Rouge is one of those that we try and wean people off to when we're doing brandy wine. It's a brandy wine type. It is newer genetics. And from the greenhouse perspective, I'm like, why don't more people grow this thing? It is a beautiful plant compared to some of, like we talked about, the wispiness or the drapiness or some of the other issues like cheddar cherry with the big inner nodes. Um, Mountain Rouge is a nice nice plant and it grows a really nice tomato <laughs> yeah it's like a brandy wine without all the problems all the problems that you can get from brandy wine yeah and that was an aas winner too so it's not just us saying that <laughs> <laughs> so just two more big red ones here super beef steak is one that we've had for a number of years kind of a generic sounding name but it's actually one of our best producers and it's uh, a little slower to get going it's a little slower to get going but um year in and year out um it's it's been a, been a really good one yeah. for um if you want to make you know BLTs can them or, or be, yeah, yeah any of that kind of stuff it's always been really good it is an open pollinated one so um if you didn't want to save seeds for a a, a good uh, solid tomato that would that'd be one you could use yeah it's not as fiddly as some of the other heirloom ones where you're not getting much out of it yeah so the last big red one is wood's famous brimmer another great big red one um, also an heirloom. People love it for BLTs and stuff like that. Yeah. And again, that's a beautiful plant in the greenhouse. It's a nice, it's not a frail, sickly thing. It's a really <laughs> sturdy, nice thing. Yeah. So let's, let's move, change colors. Let's look at our yellow, orangey types. Do we have any of the seeds we could pull yeah, out? Like I, I love the pictures on those if we've got some of those. So we'll start out with, with Lemon Boy. And this has been kind of a classic yellow one. Um, it's it's not it's like huge. bright yellow. <laughs> it, it's like super bright yellow. And last year when we had um, you know, came back from vacation and some varieties had had kind of blanked out in the heat. That wasn't one of them. That was not one of them. It, it was still loaded with with bright yellow uh, tomatoes that um, and they're good. Ha have a good flavor they're to good. them. They're kind of like the like the big boy only yellow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a little milder. It's awesome. Yeah, so okay. fairly disease resistant. So let's the uh, next one up, Dr. Wychee's. And this is kind of a yellowish, orangish one that... Uh, is that okay, so the, if I'm gonna pick just some big tomato out of the garden, 90% of the time I'm picking this one and bring it in and I love it. You just wanna one. eat it, eat it, I eat just it fresh. Eat a tomato. That is, that is a that really is delicious one. one, yeah. It's fabulous. 
And similar to that is, do we have a picture of the um, Kellogg's Breakfast in here? Yep. So Kellogg's Breakfast is another one that's kind of like that, it has the, the rumply shoulders, um, but is also, you know, a light orange type of color, also super sweet. Um, they're just, both of these ones are really good. Yeah. It's, it's hard for me to, every year I think, oh, we should just narrow down to one or the other of these, but at the end of the day, they're both really good. For both all, worth the, having. all the fabulousness of big red tomatoes, big yellow tomatoes is where it's at. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you they're like, really good. If you like super acidic ones, stick with red. If you like sweeter tones, go with, try, try, try a yellow or orange one. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you have a chef's choice orange? Not a picture. I'll okay, so just on. just picture kind of uh, like a... A traffic cone? Uh, <laughs> it's really orange. Super duper bright orange. Okay. <laughs> um, so chef's choice is, is a, just a good disease resistant one, but it, it's basically a mana orange. If you're familiar with the Which, heirloom a mana yeah, orange. We grew that one for years and I loved that one, but it was so slow. Uh, so yeah, we don't get... We plant our stuff early, and you don't get your first tomato until, like, September. All right. Well, it was a little earlier than that, okay. but it took, it took it was, a while. It was after school started, basically. <laughs> it took a while. And so this is um, Chef's Choice Orange is a mana orange. A little faster. Brought about three weeks earlier. Yeah, and that's, that's really good. Any of these. I mean, I recommend all of these that we're sharing, but particularly these yeah okay. next one is orange wellington i don't think i have a picture of that one so though. another one of our favorite orange ones we've we've narrowed down our our list of orange tomatoes pretty significantly that's because everybody wants a red one you guys are missing out <laughs> <laughs> so it's another it's like 12 ounces good meaty delicious and uh, it was also one of the ones it that is, was still producing it is this really last summer. the thing i like about that one is that you slice into that and it's all meat and juicy meat and it's just mm, yeah delicious. yeah so one we're going to try this year is Thorburn's terracotta. Which is a funky looking tomato. It's like... It's, it's bronze it's colored. Like a terracotta pot, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's bronze colored, introduced in 1893, so it's been around a long time. Um, they just described it as out of this world flavor. So I thought, well, we've got to try this one. Um, tons of really good reviews for the seeds. So, so yeah, Thorburn's terracotta, we'll give that one a try. So for other interesting colors let's move to like some of the uh the darker ones or just unique ones maybe the first one it will do is the berkeley's tie-dye pink and that one is another open pollinated that's on a kind of a compact indeterminate plant that is stripy and i don't think i have a package for that one but yeah just a really unique flavor um a lot of people really really like it and um uh, yeah. It's 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 a fun thing and it grows really like efficiently. It's, yeah. It's productive. <laughs> yeah. So I don't even know how I would describe the flavor. But yeah. People love it. <laughs> I put it almost we almost put it with like the Brad's Atomic Grape only only well, different. And, but it's, different. <laughs> and they say those are actually developed by the same breeder, Brad Brad yeah. Gates <laughs> of Wild Boar Farms so, does, does similar undertones. Maybe? Similar <laughs> undertones of uniqueness, both pretty and unique flavor. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. So Next, let's go to a couple of our green tomatoes. Uh, we've got Aunt Ruby's German Green, and then next one, Emerald Evergreen. And that one, we can't find the seeds anymore, so so we're just using what is yeah, left, left, left over. <laughs> and once it's gone, I think it'll be gone. Well, but I guess we could save seeds. We, we could save. Anymore. We could save seeds. Both of those, if you've never tried a green tomato. I was I was shocked. They are blindfold yourself. Yeah, you may have, have to again. blindfold yourself, <laughs> thinking you know, that uh, it, it can't be good. But they're amazingly sweet. Uh, really, really, really like nice. the, the the green ones. And the texture is good too. Yeah. So this is another one that we're going to try, and and part of that try is trying try <laughs> trying to pronounce the name. So I actually right. asked some of our friends who have spent a couple of years in France, how do you pronounce this one? And so my, my Iowan would say Sartre Rolois, and they say, uh, how do you, Sartre Loise. Well, I'm sure they would say it for me. I'm sure it's better than, <laughs> than, than what Sorry I can do. But anyway. <laughs> it looks fantastic, and it promises to be really good. So uh, the yellow parent of that one is, is, is the Hawaiian pineapple, mm -hmm. which was a super sweet one we've, we've really we've, liked in yeah, the past. Yeah, like that one. And so... Um, has a really unique flavor combination where you've got the hyanthocyanin 
uh, on the top that appears and then that that pineapple undertones behind it apparently makes it a really good flavor yeah. so uh, Looking we're, forward to that. we're trying that one for the first time this year so we got a black beauty here so black beauty is is another one by brad gates where uh it doesn't seem to produce anything like anybody else does. It's really dark. When it is, when it, any part of the fruit that gets direct sunlight will basically turn pitch black. Or kind of that blue black. And this one can be tricky to know when it's ripe um, because it's such a dark color and it'll go kind of reddish on the bottoms. And, but this one, this one you're going to have to check to see when it's soft. And yeah. I pick them a little early and let them ripen inside. Yeah, let them ripen them inside. Um, they're one of those ones where if you let them ripen, give them a little bit of time on the counter, they taste really good. If you pick it a little bit green and you just go and immediately slice into it, you'll be disappointed. That's not very good. Yeah, but so if it's you got to have patience right, for that one. Yep. Then a couple of our, our classic purple-ish tomatoes, black cream, is is one of the the ones that, that um, that has, one has a fan club. Has a fan club and quite a following for that one. It is very similar to Cherokee Purple, also no picture, which is <laughs> also has a fan club. Um, again, kind of this brick red, kind of darkish, little bit of purplish tint to them, but really amazing flavor. It's got a really neat undertone in these tomatoes. Um, and my favorite of that group is probably this one, the Paul Robeson. It's got kind of maybe even like a, a smoky sweet flavor to it. It's it's really it's really delicious. Yep. So that that is our list for this year we we're actually going to try a few others uh, if you watch our facebook page we'll uh, we may post a few others that we're going to add in that are almost like a pre-trial yeah so taste. if, you, if so, you feel adventurous you might could get one of our pre <laughs> pre pre-trial thing one before we even put it on the sale yep so anyway i think that is it if you got questions post them down below uh, feel free to like share all that kind of stuff you guys know what to do so talk to you later. That is it. Have a good one. Bye-bye.